Hey y'all, it's Kerr. I'm so excited to be filming today's video right now because it's been a minute. I have been really busy. Recently, I got a promotion at work, which is just so exciting. I really love my job. I love working in communications and I love public service. So it's just you know, like a really great combination for me. But because of that, I felt a little bit overwhelmed at the beginning and I felt like I had to cut back on some of my reading and some of my like video editing and posting and like filming everything involved with my YouTube channel, but now I feel like I'm starting to get things under control. I'm ready to be back. I'm ready to like put out a bunch of videos. I have a lot of ideas. So thank you so much as always for watching. And also thank you so much for 2000 subscribers. Like I can't even wrap my head around that number. So I really want to thank each and every one of you who takes the time to subscribe, to like, to comment. It really means a lot to me. So I'm very thankful and let's just get on with the haul because I am so excited. This video is going to be broken up into three different sections. The first two sections are going to be physical book hauls. I'm going to start out with a mystery thriller slash horror section at the beginning and then we're going to move into romance slash miscellaneous I, I don't know those are going to be like the two different sections for the physical books that i've hauled i have about like 20 of those to share with you guys and then i have around 10 or so audio books that i want to talk about at the end of the video i'm not going to be breaking those into genres because that's just going to get too complicated so those are the three main sections that are going to be time stamped along here at the bottom Let's start with the mystery thrillers. The first one I want to talk about is The Book of Accidents by Chuck Wendig. This is one of my most highly anticipated reads for 2021. I actually pre-ordered this book. That rarely happens. This is like the second or third book that I have pre-ordered, like have it delivered on the day of publication. So I was really, really excited to get this in the mail. I want to say last week, maybe week before last. This is a horror book that centers around a family and the mother and the father of this family both both grew up in this town and something really sinister traumatized them when they were children. I don't really know. I guess it's all related. But anyway, they're adults now. They're married. They've moved back to this town that they are from with their son Oliver. And now what kind of haunted them as children has come back and now something's going on with Oliver. I don't know if he's like seeing things. I really don't know the extent of it, but um, I know that it's going to be really kind of twisty and dark. Now I've said it before. I'll say it again. One of the best things that a horror book can do, in my opinion, is to draw on on real life I don't want to say trauma but just like real life horror and then take it to like maybe a supernatural level or a haunted level something like that and it sounds like this book is going to do just that I'm a little bit concerned about the length because I'm so scared I'm gonna get spoiled every time I try to see how many pages are in a book 529 ish pages um, in this book which is a little bit long for me I know to some of you that's nothing but this is gonna take me a while whenever I do sit down to knock it out and I'm scared it's actually gonna be a little bit of a slow burn I've heard a few mixed things but for the most part I think everyone's really enjoying this I'm certainly super excited to get to it I didn't order these in any particular order at all but I put some like really exciting ones up here at the front. Next is Near the Bone by Christina Henry. And honestly, I just straight up bought this at Barnes and Noble. I didn't thrift this. Like I just went and bought it because I saw Gabby from Gabby Reed say that this is one of her favorite books of the year so far. And it just sounds like it's gonna cater to my very specific thriller taste because we have an isolated setting here on a snowy mountain. A man and a woman are trapped together in this cabin. The man is kind of evil. We are led to believe from what is on the back of the book. And and the woman is concerned about him and what's going on with her situation but now she's concerned that something might be outside of the cabin in the woods like a predator some type of animal or something that might be hunting them I don't really know anything past that but it looks like this might be a pretty quick read it's just over 300 pages the margins are pretty large on the page so this would be like I want to say like oh this would be such a fun summertime read and it's just a picture of these snowy mountains with a little cabin but I really just want to sit down and knock this out this afternoon. It is really calling out my name. I'm really excited for it. And I don't think I mentioned it, but I do think this is horror. It's being marketed as horror at least, so we shall see. Next is one that I didn't know was rated so poorly until after I got it, but I'm still super interested to read it. It's If I Disappear. And y'all, this has like a 3.1 something on Goodreads. I don't know if I've ever seen a book with 
that low of a rating and I'm like I'm a little concerned because it sounds so good. From what I understand this is about a woman who is obsessed with this true crime podcast and not just the podcast but the podcast's host as well and then the podcast host goes missing. So then this listener here who is completely obsessed is like you know what I'm gonna go out and find her and she becomes I don't know if it's disillusioned or not but she becomes convinced that this podcast host has like left clues for her to maybe figure out where she has disappeared to. So she goes on this quest to try to find her. Of course, I think it probably goes without saying, I think that this woman's search is going to take a dangerous turn for all involved. So it sounds pretty good. I haven't really read any reviews. I just saw that low average rating and was like, I don't even want to know what are the people like the problems people have with it. I just kind of want to go in, make my own opinion. So I don't want to say I have high hopes, but I still think it sounds like a solid story and I really have my fingers crossed that it's gonna be a nice little surprise. Next is Violet by Scott Thomas and I absolutely love Kill Creek by this author. It's one of my favorite horror books of all time so check that one out if you have not read it yet and then I think that Violet is about to be really good as well. I really love that it has the deckled edges um, just like Kill Creek does in its paperback version, so I uh, can't wait to have these on the shelf together once I read this one. Now, similar to The Book of Accidents, which is the first book that I talked about in this haul, this is also about a woman or a person returning to their hometown, and I love that trope. I love that premise and that setup for any book. It's about this woman named Chris, and when she was younger, her mother died in the town where they lived, and then she moved away, and now as an adult, she has recently suffered the loss of her husband, so she and her daughter moved back to her hometown. And I think we might have a little bit of some evil imaginary friend action going on here because the last sentence on the inside flap here says, beneath its surface an evil has grown and inside that home where Chris Barlow last saw her mother, an old friend awaits her return. So I don't know, I feel like I've heard that it is like imaginary friend business, something like that. I could be completely wrong, but it sounds like it's gonna be really good. Nonetheless, I'm really, really, really excited for this one. Next we have Dead Dead Girls by Nikisa Appia. I want to say that I talked about this in a come book shopping video with me, but I really can't remember if I did or not. Now that I'm holding it up, it seems really familiar. So if you saw me haul this already, no, you didn't. This is a mystery book that takes place in Harlem in the 1920s and young black girls are going missing and turning up murdered. So then this woman named Louise Lloyd, who I'm assuming is right here on the cover, she has a mysterious past and police give her this ultimatum of you can either help us figure out what is going on here and help us solve this mystery or you can go to jail. So I don't really know all the details behind that setup, but I know that that's how this book has been pitched. I don't know why I don't read more books set in this time period because I love learning about the 1920s. I love a speakeasy setting. It's just, that's like a really fun part of history for me to learn about. I think the aesthetic of this cover is so beautiful. I'm not sure if it's gonna be like a cozy mystery, but it does say a Harlem Renaissance mystery. So that's leading me to believe that it is gonna be a mystery series eventually. And I just haven't seen that much buzz about Dead Dead Girl. So even if I have hauled it before, I wanted to throw it out there again because it is one that I've had my eye on for a while. Next we have have the plot which I talked about in my last video but I didn't own it yet and now I have it. The plot sounds so good you guys and I've seen minimal negative reviews for it. I've seen it all over booktube, all over Instagram recently. I'm sure you already know what it's about so I'm gonna keep it really brief. Basically I think it's about this young MFA student who has this amazing idea for a plot and he shares his idea with his professor but he hasn't actually written the book. He just has this idea for the book and he talks about it with his professor and then he dies. So then this professor steps in and is like <laughs> <laughs> I'm an excellent writer, but I'm fresh out of ideas, and I'm just gonna pluck. Pl I've been watching too much ASMR where they go pluck, 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 pluck. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm just gonna weasel my way in, grab this idea, write my own book, and become a huge success. So, of course, he does just that, and then things backfire in some way. Sounds great, super excited for it. I love that this is a book on the front of the book cover. I saw the cover so many times like online and then it wasn't until I actually held it in my hands that I realized what I was looking at here. And it looks like maybe we're looking up from out of a grave up into the sky and then that's on the cover of that book and then that's on the cover of this book. 
brilliant. Oop, I've got another one that I just mentioned in my last video, so if you've not watched my five star predictions video, I'll link it in the cards, in the description, you can go enjoy that. Um, this is out by Natsuo Karino. I did haul a few of her other books recently too. Let me just hold them all up together. It wouldn't make sense not to do that. Okay, so I went on a little Natsuo Karino haul binge because uh, I also got Real World and Grotesque. These are all Japanese feminist thrillers. Um, I am in the middle of Real World, really enjoying that. Uh, I did haul these in my Come Book Shopping With Me video. I will link that around too if you want to go check that out. But um, I didn't haul this one in that. This is actually probably her most famous work. This is definitely the most mainstream book that she has written and it's about this woman who kills an abusive man. I think it's her abusive husband. Yeah. And then she has to recruit all of her co-workers to come in and try to cover up the crime. And then of course, when they do, things begin to spiral out of control. This book is deceivingly long though, because in looking at it, it doesn't look too big. It tried under 400 pages, but then when I like open it up, it's like little bitty words and little bitty margins. And uh, sometimes that's intimidating for me on the page if my mind isn't 100% in it. So I don't know when I'm gonna be getting around to all these, especially since I am enjoying real world right now. I don't know if I'm gonna want to jump straight into something else from this author, but it does sound really good. And it was in that five star predictions video. I don't think it's gonna win based on the votes, but I did see some interest for it when I mentioned it. So I want to throw it in this haul video. So maybe it can go on some of your your radars if you hadn't heard of it. I also have Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. I still have a little Walmart sticker on there. I'll work on that later. This is the second book in the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series, which is one of the only young adult thrillers that I've read recently that I've really, really enjoyed. And I also think it would be really cool if I could get my hands on an audiobook for Good Girl Bad Blood because I did that with book one, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I had the physical book, which it does contain a lot of mixed media like emails or texts or or like, um, what do you call that? Like a, that looks like an audio clip, stuff like that that's fun visually to experience. But then what's really cool is on the audio book, we could hear them like going through papers or if the phone rang, like a phone would actually ring or we would hear people on the phone with that, that muffled voice. And so it was just so immersive. So I think that this will make it like farther up in my, um, list of like in order that I want to read. I, this isn't making any sense anymore. Do you see what I'm saying? I will prioritize this book if I can find an audiobook for it. All right, now let's just move on. Oh, I didn't even tell you what it's about. Okay, so A Good Girl's Guide to Murder was about this girl named Pip who's a senior in high school and for her senior capstone project she decides she wants to try to solve a cold case. I can't remember if it's actually a cold case or if she just didn't think the person who was blamed was responsible for the crime. I don't know. But anyway, she just heads up her own amateur investigation and then just like, it's just really interesting how she solves things or like how she attempts to solve things. I'm not giving away anything, but this is just a continuation of that story, but just kind of like with a new case. Next is Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. I'm so glad I finally own this because I've been wanting to read it for so long, but it's another one that just sounds really intimidating to me, but it is a book within a book which is just top tier. I, mm, I can't get enough of a book within a book. I will say I have already started this one and it's, it's a little... It's a little difficult. It takes a little bit of brain power. Um, the writing is really sophisticated, which I do like, but I'm finding it a little time consuming to read. That's not like a negative note. I just want to put it out there. This is not like something I want to casually pick up and read because also I'm trying to solve what's going on here. This is about a book editor named Susan and she is the editor to this guy named Alan Conway. And he writes this detective series that is kind of like a Perot character. His name is like, uh, Atticus, Atticus Punt, yeah. Atticus Pund and so the newest Atticus Pund book has come out. Susan is reading it and while she is reading it she realizes that there might be some like connections to something that's going on in real life. So like we're reading the book, we're, we're reading this book about Susan and the author and everything but like literally after the first few pages, we start reading the book with Susan. So I am reading this new Atticus Pund mystery. So it's just like, it's a lot to grasp, which usually I just completely eat that up. But with my mind just being in a million different places recently, I haven't had the time to like decode everything as I would like to. But 
I am really ready to get back into it once my mind settles down just a little bit. And I do want to mention, this is a little series. I think that there are three, maybe four books. I don't want to miss say that, but there are definitely three books in this series. I'll cut that out if I'm wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong. No, you were wrong. It's, it's just two books in the series. You're wrong. So the rest of the mystery thriller books that I have to talk about are all book of the month books. So I'm just going to go through them really quickly because I feel like uh, you probably know what all of these are by now. Um, this is Before She Knew Him by Peter Swanson. I chose this as an add-on a little bit ago and I really, really love The Kind Word Killing by Swanson. It's somewhere right there. Um, anyway, oh, just dropped those. This is about a couple who moves to a new neighborhood and the new wife begins to suspect that um, one of their neighbors is responsible for a crime that she had become obsessed with the case surrounding that crime. I'm a little bit skeptical about what the mental health rep is going to be like in this book because I think that uh, this new neighbor, like this new woman, she used to experience psychotic episodes in college and I just, I want to make sure that that is being like healthily represented in the book, but I am excited to get to it because I've heard that people who really like The Kind Worth Killing also really enjoy Before She Knew Him and I think there's going to be a really good twist in this book. Um, also, how lucky. I really haven't seen that many people choose this one. This was like a book of the month pick for peak May. So, oh my gosh, I feel like I've had this for so long. I, it was just a pick for May. Not gonna lie, I mostly picked this book up because it takes place in Athens, Georgia, which is a place where I've spent a lot of my time. And uh, that's where University of Georgia is. But anyway, this is about a man named Daniel who has a debilitating disease that he's had since childhood to where he cannot move or speak without his wheelchair. So he spends a lot of time like people watching, looking out his window. And one day he sees something he's not supposed to see. I think he sees a woman get kidnapped, snatched off the street. And so then from there, he has to become this unlikely hero in this story. I just got chills talking about that. Um, so it just sounds, it sounds like a very familiar trope to me, but just done in a different way. So I am interested to see how this one plays out. I've also got razor blade tears. I have not done a final tally on that five star predictions video, like what books I'm going to be reading for that vlog that hopefully will be up by next weekend. Fingers crossed. Um, but something tells me razor blade tears might be in that video because this got so, so, so many votes. Everyone is really, really loving razor blade tears. It's about these two fathers who each had sons and the sons were married to each other, but then the sons are both murdered. So the two fathers kind of make this unlikely duo and go out to get revenge for their son's deaths sounds really really good and everyone is loving this one i'm sure that you've heard about it by now but if you haven't yet this is one where i want to recommend it even though uh, i've not read it yet i just can't imagine that this is going to go poorly for me but we'll see soon because i think i'm going to be reading it in my next vlog lastly survive the night y you know you know it you know what i'm gonna say about survive the night uh riley sager love him one of my favorite thriller authors but survive the night i don't know if it's I don't know if it's it, you guys. I, I'm, I'm well into the story right now and I'm not loving it. It might surprise me. I haven't gotten to any shocking twists or turns yet, but I don't know how I feel about it. It is about a young girl in college trying to make her way home for the holidays. I don't know if she's gonna be returning to the university, but she's gonna hitchhike with a stranger all the way home. And when she gets in the car with him, she's like, oh my gosh, you know, my roommate, died recently. She was brutally murdered by the campus killer. Um, and then once she gets in the car with this guy, she's like, wait, is this guy the campus killer? How will I know? Am I safe? Am I in danger? I've seen a ton of polarizing reviews though. People are hating this one, you guys. People are hating this book and then people are loving it. I'm seeing two star reviews and I'm seeing five star reviews, pretty much no in between. So I don't think I'm going to be too surprised if this falls on like the lower end of the scale for me, but I am going to finish it soon. Hopefully. I don't know. I don't even know why I said that. I don't know if I'm gonna be finishing it soon. Okay, that concludes the thriller mystery horror section of the video. Let's quickly move on to romance. I don't have too many of these to share with you. Only like four. So the first one is gonna be Roomies by Christina Lauren. All I know about this one is that it has a Broadway setting and the trope here is marriage of convenience um, or marrying someone for a visa. So I really am not super into that trope all the time, but this is the last of the Christina Lauren rom-coms that I haven't read. And while their writing isn't super groundbreaking, 
I can't get enough of it. There's something so relaxing about cracking open a new Christina Lauren. Oh wait, I haven't read The Soulmate Equation, which is the newest, but um, of the backlist, this is the last backlist I haven't read. So I'm really excited for it because I think that it's just really relaxing to read these. They're always so easy to read. They're usually really fun. Um, I'm not looking for a new favorite or anything like that, but sometimes after a long day of work, I just want my mind to like melt. And I wanna be able to still read even if I have the TV on or even if like I'm not paying attention all the way. I feel like that's horrible, but most of the books that I read, I feel like require me to be thinking constantly. And sometimes with these, I can just go on autopilot and enjoy myself. So that is why I hauled roomies recently. I also have One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. This is the same author as Red, White, and Royal Blue. And I've seen mixed reviews for One Last Stop, but I do think I'm really going to enjoy it. This is a sapphic romance focusing in on August and Jane. August meets Jane on the subway one day and immediately gets this crush on her. But then there's a time travel issue because she realizes that Jane is actually from the 1970s and is stuck on this subway maybe in a I don't think it's like a time loop but it's some type of time travel problem I guess that part sounds outside of my comfort zone um I don't even want to call it speculative fiction I, I don't know if it's speculative fiction or not perhaps it is but I do think that Casey McQuiston is a really funny person and a funny writer so I have faith that they're gonna be able to tie it all in together yeah I don't know. I have the audiobook for this. I got it <clears throat> as part of the Libro FM advanced listener copy program, whatever, a few months ago, and I have not listened to it yet. So now that I have a physical copy, I think I'll listen and read along with it. So I'm really excited to do that. This next one is so random, you guys. I have Heartstopper. Let me make sure I'm focused. I have Heartstopper volume three which I have already read. I, I got confused at the bookstore the other night. I was looking for Heartstopper Volume 4 thinking they might have it because I don't know if I had dreamed it or not, but I thought that a new one had come out and this was the latest one that they had there. And I was like, oh, that must be it because I read, well, I read books one, two, and three online on tapas i think and i was like i want to go ahead and get the newest one and read it with my hands and then i can like slowly go back and collect the others no i got home last night and uh wanted to start this book and i read about 10 pages and was like this seems really oddly familiar and actually it's one of the ones i have already read so i'm not mad about it because i wanted an excuse to start my collection anyway but i'm just a little disappointed i don't know if i want to go ahead and read the new one online or not if i want to go ahead and get the other copies i'll stop rambling but oh i didn't tell you heartstopper is a graphic novel series by alice oseman and it follows the story of nick and charlie who um who fall in love and it is just the most precious precious story i just i love this series so much i love the illustrations so much they're just so adorable these books really just make me happy so that's why i got it but i'd already read it uh anyway i also have uh anyway the wind blows this is the newest simon snow book and i think it is going to be the conclusion to the series and i'm the last person on earth who thought i was gonna like these books but i randomly read carry on a few years ago and i really liked it and then i read wayward son last year and i was excited for this book to come out this is a ya fantasy romance series. It's really like Harry Potter. If, if someone wrote like the Harry Potter, Draco Malfoy fanfic, that's what this is. It's a male male romance between um, Baz here and Simon Snow. Simon Snow was like a chosen one type wizard. Baz came from a family of vampires and was at this wizarding school. And I don't know, it's like, it's not complicated. I don't know why I'm making it sound complicated, but uh, yeah, this is the last book in that series and my mom got it for me recently. So thank you, mom. <laughs> All right. Lastly, I want to talk about some audiobook calls. So let me first tell you about Libro FM and the ALCs that I have from Libro that I've gotten over the past few months. Um, the first one is A Slow Fire Burning by Paula Hawkins and I am about to finish this one today. I only have like 30 minutes left of the audiobook and I, spoiler alert, no, not for the book, just spoiler alert for my thoughts on the book. I am really enjoying it and I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel at first. It is about, uh, I don't even know if I wanna tell you all about what it's about. It's actually kind of complicated to explain what it's about. Um, all I'm gonna say is there are some murders at the beginning and of course we're trying to figure out who's responsible for the murders and we're introduced to a like a large cast of characters very early in the book and 
right in the beginning you start to see little parallels or little connections between all the different characters but you're still a little overwhelmed you're like why are we like learning about any of this but i swear by the end the way the characters are connected to each other it really has been a fun read and that really is all i'm going to tell you it's just like a big murder mystery from libro fm i also have falling by tj newman this sounds so so fast paced it all takes place on an airplane but all of the passengers on the airplane don't know that the pilot's family has been kidnapped and the only way for his family to survive is for him to crash the plane and have everyone on the plane Die. And that's the entire premise of the book. I think that is so smart, especially right now when I feel like everyone has just been doing the most in these convoluted plots. I think it's a really cool power move just to be like, here's a super simple idea and I'm just going to write my butt off and make it a really good read. And I say that, I've not read it yet, but I say that because everyone has really been enjoying falling from what I've heard. So I'm really excited to see like a very simple action book. It almost sounds, I know it's a thriller, but it's just like an action thriller. Sounds really good. I also got Apples Never Fall by Leanne Moriarty. This is the same author as Nine Perfect Strangers and Big Little Lies. I love her thrillers. And I'm especially excited about this one because it follows this wealthy tennis family. Like the parents owned and ran this famous tennis academy for all these years. And they have four children, all who were tennis stars. If you didn't know, I play tennis. I played tennis in college and also was a tennis instructor for a very long time and I still play so that's very close to my heart but I do have a little pet peeve of like it's just like when you're an expert in anything in life and then you see it depicted in a book and you start picking it apart like no this is so unrealistic I'm gonna go ahead and warn you it's about to sound like I I'm just gatekeeping tennis, like the entire sport of tennis. I promise that was not my intention. I feel like tennis is a sport that is very uh, commonly the butt of jokes and I feel protective over it. So I promise I'm not trying to gatekeep here. You'll see what I mean in a second, but. Literally every time someone mentions tennis in a book, like Karen Slaughter, she might play tennis for all I know, but anytime she mentions tennis in a book, I'm like, no one would say it like that like no I, you, you know what i mean like the verbiage is just wrong so i'm a little concerned i hope leanne moriarty um isn't gonna like botch the tennis lingo that's okay that's okay uh but it's about this whole family thing going on and then um their dad gets caught in the middle of something and the siblings are kind of torn on whether or not he is innocent and then because of that they dive deeper into their family's history and past so it sounds like it's gonna be a fun thriller but also like a really big giant family drama the audiobook is almost 20 hours long so i feel like we're gonna have a lot of time to unpack some family dynamics going on um i love moriarty's writing style so i won't have a problem there at all um yeah really 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 excited for apples never fall lastly i have Beautiful World, Where Are You by Sally Rooney. I've been so excited for this book to come out, even though I haven't read any Sally Rooney books. So I'm gonna go ahead and speak it into existence. I really wanna do a Sally Rooney reading vlog where I read normal people, conversations with friends, and Beautiful World, Where Are You? I don't know when that's gonna be coming out, but it's on my agenda. It's on my mental agenda. I might even write it down. I think Beautiful World, Where Are You? is just gonna be straight up lit fic. I, I really don't know. It might be contemporary, um, but it's just about young people trying to navigate. I don't know if it's early adulthood, but they're just trying to get through life and like all the ups and downs that come with that. And it's giving me a little life vibes, like without the trauma, just little like mundane slice of life fiction. Mm, love it. Oh, I lied. I lied. One more I want to haul. It's actually a library book hold that just came in, but it's brand new and I want to hear what your thoughts are on like if you're interested to read it. Uh, it's Such a Quiet Place by Megan Miranda. And if I'm remembering correctly, this book just sounds wild. Like I think it's about this woman who was suspected in killing a family that lived in their neighborhood. I think she might have even gone to jail for killing this husband and wife. And then she gets out of jail and then returns to the neighborhood. And when she gets back, she's like, maybe that wasn't a good idea to come back here. Everyone's looking at me funny. Like, yeah, girl, what are you doing? But anyway, she starts getting these threatening notes once she returns. And so she's like, shoot, I'm gonna have to actually solve who actually killed these people because I know I didn't do it. So I'm gonna have to figure out who did before like something bad happens to me. So that sounds like different. I actually, this might be an unpopular opinion. I really like 
Megan Miranda. Like, I like her books. They're usually like between a three and a four star for me. I don't think I'm gonna find a new all-time favorite book from her. But I like her stories and I like the way that she writes. So I am excited for Such a Quiet Place. That is it for the summer book call. Hopefully I won't be doing another one of these until the fall. I try to keep them seasonal, so spring, summer fall, winter. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Keep an eye out for some really exciting vlogs, hopefully coming soon. And yeah, I will see you in the next video. Bye!